Well, the rain has stopped, the humidity is low, so it's a good day to get back to work on the battens for the shed. Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to Retired for Life. So we've got a busy day ahead, even though I've already lost the first half of the day by having to go into town. We're a little bit behind on some maintenance work. Uh, I've got to get the oil changed on the tractor, oil and filter on the tractor, oil and filter on the ATV. I've got a little bit of maintenance work I need to do to the uh, John Deere lawn tractor. The valve clearances need to be reset on that. And I still have to change the oil on the uh, sawmill. But it's the perfect day to work on that south wall for the battens on the storage shed. So we're going to get right back to work on that. And that's where we'll spend our afternoon today. We'll see how far we get. This is the fiddly side. Every single batten you put up has got to be measured. Some of them have got to be spliced together because the longest ones I have is eight feet and that is a wall that's over 10 feet high. So we're gonna leave the maintenance stuff for the time being because we don't need to use any of that equipment right now. And let's get to work on the storage shed. Let's go cut our first pieces. All right, so one piece will cover from the edge of the wall to the center. So I've got my angles cut on both ends. So let's get this one installed up here. Yeah, that's better. All right, we'll get the one up on the other side and then continue on. Well, good morning, folks. We're back at it. We uh, bailed out yesterday as things got a little too hot. So it's pretty early now and things are already starting to warm up. But we've got three battens on either side. We've got our batten that runs along the inside of the roof line. And we've got four battens on the bottom of the window. So we are making progress. And I'm now starting to cut the battens that go over top of the window. Now this angle here on my window frame is the same angle as the roof angle, just to make it look nice and symmetrical. Uh, and the other thing that does for me is I can just cut the same angle on either end of my batten. So let's see if I got this right. Oh, that's perfect. We are right on where we want to be.
All right, let's get the other one up. I'm gonna have to reduce the height of my ladder. All right, folks, there's our top battens in. Now, what I did to avoid creating a dam up on top of this frame is I left a quarter of an inch of space between the bottom of the batten and the top of the window frame. So we're not gonna have water trapped up there in that small spot uh, along the edge of the batten. Okay, so next are these long ones here. So what I wanna do is make sure that I am ending these battens at one of the crosses here, the middle of one of the crossovers. And I also have to put that f a, uh, an angle on the bottom of this batten for splicing. So let's just start with this one. So this batten needs the angle at the top, and then it's going to need a 45 degree angle at the bottom um, coming out for the uh, splice. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video, and if you have, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you've got any comments, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to work. So I wanna give you a little closer look at how these splices work. So you can see the bottom of this batten, now fastened in place, except for the bottom screw, is cut 45 degrees coming out. That way rain is not gonna get directed down into the wall, it's gonna come out. So my next mating board, also 45, just tap it up into there. And we'll get our top and bottom screws into it. And then our top screw into the bottom of this board. So it mates up reasonably well. That's going to stop the water from going in, and that's the main thing. All right, that's good. So that's what I've got to do for the next battens going both ways. All right, folks, there is the south side done. I still have to do some touch-ups on the ends, and then I've got to go along the bottom and put a bit of stain on the ends of all the boards there. You can see there's still a bit of work to do at the top, but that has the south side done. Thank goodness, that's the worst. Now I can get onto the north side where I'm pretty much always in the shade. Well, we've got all the batten work done. The only thing left to do now is to go around with the paintbrush and touch up the ends and along the bottom and that type of thing and install the hooks for the door, which I am uh, about to take care of. I just want to make sure that where I put them is going to work. Yeah, okay, that looks good. So I've got a nice black kind of antique-ish looking hooks for the doors. Not that it makes that much difference because these are north facing and the only way you're going to see this is if you actually come out and go around to the back end of the uh, shop to see it. But I'll see it, so why not? And that is 42 inches up from the bottom of the door. Isn't that clever? I just put it on upside down. <laughs> All right, that's good. That gives me something to hold on to to open the door.
perfect. Now I don't have to use a board to try to hold them open anymore. All right, I haven't seen one that color before. Interesting little fella. All right, let's get back to work. All right, folks, there we are. The building is done. All the battens are on. I've touched up all the stain. Yeah, it looks good. I'm quite pleased. Definitely looks cleaner with the battens all on. That's good. All right. I've got the hooks in place for the doors. So we are all set. Excellent. Another job off the list. All right, well, that was quite the job. A lot of boards to put up when it comes to battens. So there's about 80 battens on here altogether, including the ones that I put along the top. So a couple of things to think about when you're doing stuff like this, when you're doing board and batten siding, is think about where rain can gather. You want to try to eliminate that as much as possible, which is why we've got the space up on top of the window frame here with the bottom of the battens. And it's also why our battens and boards are angled at the bottom and they're angled where any splices are. So that really helps reduce the amount of rain or water that can collect in those spots, which isn't gonna do your wood any good. So that gives you an idea of how I do board and batten. So if you've got a better way of doing it that you would like to share, I would love to hear from you. Please put it up in the comments so everybody can see. Uh, and as I have said many times before, this is not a definitive way of doing these type of things. This is me learning as I go and uh, figuring out what appears to be the best way for me. That does not mean that it is the best way to do it. So I just wanna thank everybody for watching. If you found the videos interesting or at least a little bit entertaining, please give it a like and share it around. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. We are growing and it's making a big difference. And thank you to all those new subscribers out there who are subscribing to the channel. I appreciate it. And don't forget, check your settings because YouTube does have this little thing where they turn them off now and then. So remember to be safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. I love those chimes.